Hey guys, this is Pokemon Sun, video number 53. Uh, in the last video we basically just battled all the trainers there in the Pony Wilds, and now we're here on the Ancient Pony Path. So, uh, Pony Island, like, its areas, they, they don't have, like, root names or root numbers. It's just, oh, Pony this, Pony that. And Lily has finally caught up to us. Ah. <sighs> Oh, so this must be Hapu's house. The only house still standing on Pony Island. I feel like there's a story behind that. Go all out in something now? What what do you need to do now? Lily Livered. Ah! Oh, I thought she was going to do that stupid little Z move pose again. That would have been hilarious. Oh, there is no kahuna on Pony? Huh. Oh, the odd thing that appeared out of the sky that must have been one of the Ultra Beasts that, uh, that came through the wormhole. Of course. Oh, that's not creepy at all. Eek, says Lily. <laughs> oh, it's Hapu's old gran. Yeah. How did you guess? A apparently I would, eh? <laughs> There's a Machamp. And I think that's actually a Machamp, not someone in a Machamp costume like that guy at the Hano Grand Resort who was trying to be a caddy. That's so weird. He's basically just carrying you. <laughs> But remember we saw that one person who was being carried by the Machamp there in Holy Cemetery when we went back that one time? That was weird. Yeah, she was going to the ruins. Pony Bricker Coast. Alright, so we'll get there first before we get to the ruins. Tapu Fini lives. So we, we hear about all these other Tapus. There's Tapu Coco on Melamele Island and Tapu... I don't know their names on the other islands. But, like, Tapu Koko is the only one that we've actually, like, seen at this point. Which I guess makes sense, because they always talk about how the Tapus are, like, supposed to be elusive and whatnot. So I guess it makes sense that you won't have really seen them. Dang, there's just Machamps all over this place. Hello, Gabna. Oh, she's back in here. Oh, that's cool. Mill Tank will actually heal your Pokemon. And this just huge ass Budsdale is in here watching TV. Look. Rough ride. Rough ride. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, what's this way? Oh, this is like the front door. Oh wow, this is a fancy house. It has like multiple doors. Hiss, it says. Oh, and this is the room. Strange creature was sucked into the Zygarde cube. Senna? Yes. I'm not quite sure what that meant, honestly. Persola? That's a weird thing to say. Persola? <laughs> cham Cham, he says. Uh, I guess I have to go around this way now in order to get out. I guess there's no way to get out, like, the other side. 
It looks like you should be able to walk across the top of the house, but I don't see any way to get up there. Like, see, like it looks like it should be like a little path. Here's another Zygarde cell or something. Ma'am, ma'am, it says. Um, can I go this way? No. I saw an item back here that I want to try to get to. That guy there is blocking the way, so I'm not even going to try to go that way. A shiny stone. Ah, uh, it was trying to hide from us. You saw that? Mm, okay. I thought I was going to be able to go behind that thing, like out behind that guy, but nope. I'm using this super repel even though I'm not like running through the grass right now. Well, I'm running through the grass now, so I guess that's why I used it. Adre adrenaline orb. Um, so I couldn't figure out what an adrenaline orb does, and I believe it's an item that you can use to make like. I think it. I think it helps make wild Pokemon appear more frequently, or something like that. Which is weird. It's like the opposite of what I want. But there are some areas like some caves in, in these games where wild Pokemon have kind of a low appearance rate. So something like an Adrenaline Orb might be useful in a cave like that, especially if you're trying to catch like a rare Pokemon in that area. So I guess I could see it. And I swear we just walked right by this person and she didn't stop us. <laughs> Sightseer Jamie. Oh, and she had four Pokemon. Dang. Sandshrew, the OG Sandshrew. This the little ground type from Kanto. Sandstorm kicked up. Sandshrew is buffeted by the sand. Or no, Aragog is buffeted by the sandstorm. Not Sandshrew. He's a ground type. Ground types don't get buffeted by sandstorms. Because they're ground type. I don't think rock or steel type Pokemon do either. And I just have none of those types on my team. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've, I've really ever used too many steel types. Let's see. Let me go back through a history of my steel types. Okay, well I had Magnazone and Pokemon Blaze Black. Um, I had Metagross and Storm Silver. I had Lucario and Bloody Platinum. I had Scizor and Expert Emerald. Okay, never mind. I guess I have used Steel types from time to time. <coughs> Alright, let's get Zygarde some experience here. So at this point, I'm kind of thinking that even though Zygarde was my plan B, that he may end up being my my sixth Pokemon. Because at this point, at the places I've been to so far, I'm re there's, re there's really not any Pokemon that I'm re like really excited about adding to my team. Um, and I don't know. I mean, Zygarde is just, like, pretty much the perfect typing already. Dragon and Ground, and there are both types that I could really, like, use and would, like, be helpful going forward. So, um, I'm thinking that Zygarde will end up being the sixth Pokemon uh, that I use, but we'll see. You never know what could happen between now and the Pokemon League. Oh, what is that? Was that a Wimpod? That's cool, it's like a geyser. Some fishing spots there in the water. I don't think I could surf. Like, I think I tried to surf on the water and it wouldn't let me.
See, I feel like I should be able to like do something from here. This should be like a picture spot or something. But no, I, I just stand there. I don't know. But we've got all these got all these little fishing spots there close to shore, which kind of supports the whole yeah, you can't surf here thing, so Anyway, we went through the Pony Breaker coast or whatever that was, and now we are coming up here on the ruins of hope. So, good stuff. And Lily's already here with Mudsdale, but Hapu is nowhere in sight. Maybe. Do you think that'll work? Sorry, I was reading about stuff. <laughs> I was reading about Cosmo. So yeah, we're, we're having to get to the little door on the other side of the ruins here. So in order to do that, we have to push these out of the way. So we got that Machamp shove now. Just shove. And yes, I know that there's areas that I can go back to with Machamp Shove, and there's even an area I can go back to with the Sharpedo Jet on Mele Mele, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'll do that later. I'll do that in after game, <laughs> I've decided. And I also completely, like, forgot to do the, the, I think it's the Hyena or the Hyena Desert that's there off of Route 13, so that'll be something else that I more than likely do in the after game. That desert is actually where you get the psychic Um Which would probably come in handy for Raichu coming up in the Pokemon League. But I, th I think I'm still going to end up waiting until after the uh, after the Pokemon League. And just kind of go back and visit all the places I missed as part of the after game. Oh, there's Hapu. So Hop Who is the Kahuna now. <laughs> She's all smug. You're still two feet tall. So I guess the Island Guardians, the Top Who's, they choose the Kahunas. That's pretty cool. Yes, I guess so. Wish. Was I given the sparkling stone? Because Tapu Koko didn't exactly give it to me. I think he just kind of left it behind and I took it. <laughs> mm. 
Lily's like, yay, you're a kahuna. Now I don't have to actually look for one. And apparently she just knows all about the legendary Pokemon because she's the kahuna now. Yes, it was a beast. Beast! We did not stand a chance. Wow. Oh, so she and Tapu Fini actually battled it together? That's interesting. That's cool, though, because remember, like, it showed Hala and Tapu Koko battling that thing together? That was pretty cool. <clears throat> this is the Moon Flute. What lake on Ula Ula? There's a lake? Executor Island. Yeah. What lake on Ula Ula would she be talking about? I wonder if she's talking about the lake that that, uh... Or maybe she's talking about that Route 15. Is that... Was that a lake? That was just more of like a watery area. Like a coastal area. I wonder if the lake is the one... Oh, you know what? I wonder if the lake is, like, where that castle was, remember, off of, like, just off of the meadow where I said, oh, I bet this is where, like, the Grand Trial site is. I wonder if that's the lake she was talking about, because that thing was, like, in the middle of a lake. So, anyway, um, I guess we're supposed to go now to Executor Island to see if we can find the Sun Flute now. So, that's what we gonna do. We're going to go to Executor Island to see if we can find the Sun Flute. And I'm going to fly to to uh, Seafolk Village. Oh, Lily. Okay, so, um, I guess this is where we set off for Executor Island. From where we set off for Executor Island. And this guy will take us, I presume. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep standing right here till the end of the video. So thank you for watching, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. We will go to Executor Island in the next video. Bye.